Please welcome our first speaker, Mihail Mushat. Over the past 20 years, Mihail has been juggling between management in IT, personal and business training, and social entrepreneurship. After spending eight years in a YAS company, he was excited to embrace a new role within Zitec and help organizations make an impact with technology. As DevOps manager, his mission is to turn Zitec into a household name in application modernization locally and internationally, and guide their clients throughout their digital transformation journey. Specifically, Mihail and his team help their clients efficiently bridge the gap between development and operations, streamline their delivery process, and ensure the best DevOps approach for their business and software applications needs. Mihail is discovering why Kubernetes brings advantages from a business perspective. We will explore together the benefits of Kubernetes adoption from a cost, time, and people perspective. Remember to ask your questions in the chat, and we will address them during the panel discussion. Mihail, the stage is yours. Thanks a lot, Vlad. Um, hi, everyone. Even though I cannot, uh, I cannot see you, um, uh, it's uh, somehow I can uh, recall the first uh, event when I've been a speaker during pandemic times. It's been a similar feeling that uh, I was uh, mostly seeing my screen without being able to see who is uh, who's taking part of the event. Um, but yeah, this this era of the pandemic opened up new opportunities and. Uh, yeah, having such events continues to be an opportunity to join people uh, across the globe without having to travel. So, yeah, as um, as Vlad said, uh, we're gonna cover uh, the topic of Kubernetes. Myself, um, the introduction has already been made by just to say a few words. Um, that uh, I think the first job I had in uh, in IT area has been back in 2003. So yeah, it's it's 20 years. Uh, there have been uh, web development companies, uh, software development companies, uh, research and development centers, and then previously to joining the current company, which is uh, Zitec. I've been uh, with uh, an infrastructure as a service company. Now, jumping from uh, from that to a company that is focusing on the latest technologies, which is uh, which is Zitec, gave me the opportunity to go higher up the stack uh, instead of um, always looking at our physical infrastructure, um, how you know it's power in the data center, how it's cooling in a data center, how is it internet. How are the racks and the servers and the switches and the routers and everything in terms of infrastructure? Right now, we're we're embracing the latest technologies and trends in order to have, um, you know, really fast deployments of uh, software applications for our customers, and uh, of course, having the underlying infrastructure um, optimized for both performance as well as cost. So um, in, in a nutshell, a few words about Zitec to understand the context of this project that we're, we're delivering and to understand how we ended up in this place where we're actually focusing on um, developing software application, developing e-commerce platforms. Um, We've started our journey, Zitec started this journey actually 20 years ago, and then um, it's been an early adopter of uh, cloud technologies uh, starting uh, 2008. And in the last couple of years to get closer to, to Kubernetes, um, we've started playing around in the company with Kubernetes as well. First of all, definitely on, um, dev environment and then with more and more projects existing and new projects to go also for um, staging and the production environment. Um, now we see a trend more and more customers with existing projects 
um, are uh, looking to to have um, this migration mostly from cloud they remain in the cloud and they go to kubernetes but we also had projects where we've delivered kubernetes on prem so you know it's it's not a constraint uh, you can be in a traditional data center on prem or in the cloud and you can still take advantage on uh, of uh, kubernetes now as i said um the focus on on kubernetes um is is starting from from needs yeah so most of our customers are looking to to win something it's not just because they heard there's a hype around kubernetes yes definitely there is um and definitely started uh, many years ago with big companies big names and uh, right now more and more companies around us and even startups are going from the beginning um with kubernetes but there are still many companies that have to make this transition from um, traditional uh, server hosting or vms uh, dedicated uh, i don't know open stack uh, uh, virtualized environments they need to make this transition but they are not convinced so through the interactions that we had we really understood you know what drives people moving to kubernetes and um, kubernetes in the end it's not only about infrastructure it's actually a mix it combines several worlds like uh, devops is doing as well and uh, this world um, means software development and infrastructure to name the list um, so instead of instead of um, focusing on on wasting time and money I'll, I'll i'll go into the next slides focusing how kubernetes can actually um, gain time and make us save money this is gonna be the six points that I'm gonna tackle throughout the presentation today. And for each of them, I'm gonna try to share a little bit from our experience. I have a few case studies that uh, I will share during this presentation, even though it's, a no, it's not a technical presentation per se, meaning that I'm not gonna show, showcase how we implement uh, Kubernetes. I'm gonna discuss specific use cases and how our customers um, manage to benefit from the implementation of Kubernetes. None of the projects that we've delivered had been you know, flawless. Actually, many of them um, involved uh, many hours of learning from both the DevOps team, as well as the development team from our side and from the customer side. And I'm sure that any of you that uh, has been playing around with Kubernetes in development and production environment, um, realize the same thing that, you know, it's, it's one thing on paper and it's one thing to read about the benefits and it's a different story to actually start using it. Um, as, as our chief information officer was sharing recently, it's, it's not a straight journey. There are a lot of, uh, left and right that you need to take along the way. And uh, from each of these, there will be insights and learnings that will help optimize these implementations. So the first one that I, I've chose to, to start with because it's a recent project that we went live with uh, last year, it's actually time to market. Um, but before going into that example, um, I've been curious, you know, to ask also chat GPT, you know, I, I believe that uh, almost everybody has played recently with it. And I was curious to see, you know, um, how can um, it draw a diagram of the benefits of Kubernetes. And um, of course, all this come along also with the DevOps practices is not the uh, straightforward uh, press a button and you have kubernetes in uh, 
in the production environment, in the dev environment, in the local environment. Um, it's, it also requires a lot of time from the developers and the DevOps engineers and a lot of automation, a lot of extra tools that need to be used. Um, in terms of that, you know, I think from, uh, from our stack, we, we can never lack Terraform and, and help, for example. But anyway, getting back to, to the benefits, um, as, as said earlier, it's definitely also about development and we can see that uh, we have an improved developer productivity. These percentages are not to be trusted, I guess, because yeah, as, as ChatGPT per se was saying, um, they're approximate values and this can depend on the, each specific project and organization. So, you know, they're, let's say projections, um, it, there is no, nothing behind it that supports these numbers. But, uh, you know, for the fun of it, I, I, I've led them here. Now, in traditional, in traditional uh, hosting and also with VMs, uh, there is a lot of time spent with, with manual tasks and definitely Kubernetes can have a high impact on that. I don't know if it's 50 to 70% or, or lower, but definitely it can have uh, a big impact. As well said earlier, also supported with tools that you can automate a lot of tasks with, with scripts that you can automate um, a lot of manual tasks that need to be done. Um, greater scalability and flexibility and improved reliability and availability. Um, yes, this in the end, they all lead to faster time to market. And this is, this is the point where we are right now and definitely increase revenue. The faster you can launch your product, if you're a startup or if you're a company that wants to want to launch a new product, the faster you launch that on the market, you know, um, the sooner you start uh, having customers and that leads to, to increase the revenue. So instead of, instead of uh, waiting too much time on, on putting an environment, a local environment for the developers, a dev environment where even QA can, can, can test, and then the production environment with the help of uh, DevOps tools and Kubernetes, uh, we can have that faster. And we have a project um, where I even have some numbers in the following slides. And then on the infrastructure side, definitely the infrastructure cost can be reduced as there are a lot of optimizations that can be done. A lot of over provisioning that can be avoided, especially when um, um, there are a lot of components in an application, uh, then you can balance those resources for each application depending on when the spikes are. And better service level objectives and increase security. But we will go one by one for each of these ones. So an application from um, FinTech that we've uh, recently developed, um, it's uh, for, for this customer, Token Financial Technologies. And we had two main objectives. Uh, we had um, a very strict uh, timeline to have the MVP online. We've started everything from scratch. And then uh, not only to have the application online in this uh, short uh, amount of time, but also have the platform PCI DSS compliant ready. So for those of you that are not familiar with PCI DSS, for any business that uh, is um, processing payments, and I'm not referring to an e-commerce site that uh, has an API call through that goes to Stripe, for example, but I'm speaking about, you know, the actual business like Stripe that actually has to process those payments per se that are, are actually storing uh, credit card data. Um, so each of these businesses need to be audited and they need to be PCI DSS compliant. So in that regard, um, 
Kubernetes also helped on the security architecture. And when I'll get to the security part, I'm going to highlight the architecture that uh, the DevOps team uh, designed uh, for, for PCI DSS to be easier to be accomplished as a goal. But also um, by the ease of provisioning everything that was needed with Kubernetes, um, the development team was able to deliver this project in such a short amount of time. And also the DevOps team was able to, to cover all the technical needs of the dev team as well as the security team. Second item that it's definitely top in terms of uh, decision making. So when, and probably also during uh, this meeting, some of you might be in these roles uh, of decision making in different uh, organization, definitely in uh, IT roles. Um, cost is the first thing that, you know, is, is putting something on the table, taking it off the table. Um, and there are cases where uh, Kubernetes doesn't bring any cost savings. But the bigger the project it is, the more complex it is, um, the higher the, co the requirements on various topics are like security, as we were talking earlier, um, the bigger this advantage becomes with Kubernetes. So in this regard, uh, yeah, it's about resource utilization and reducing the infrastructure overhead, and then to avoid over-provisioning resources and paying for unused capacity, because when paying for those, we're actually wasting money. Um, the example that I have prepared here is from one of our customers, I think, especially for the Romanian attendees, same day is, is a uh, reference company. Uh, there are more than 3,000 uh, easy box lockers in, in Romania. And the network started to spread also outside the country. Um, before moving to Azure Kubernetes service, so in this case, it's been Azure, but uh, yeah, similar services are, are available in, in most clouds. Um, the infrastructure and the configuration of squad was uh, covered by these two tools, Terraform and Ansible. And at the time, we were speaking about 20 to 30 environments, production demo, um, and uh, dev environments. But the biggest overhead was in terms of uh, the VMs that needed to be managed. And uh, yeah, everybody who is working and, or had uh interactions with uh, sysadmin teams or maybe yourselves had to do that you know how painful it is to keep uh, up to os versions especially in some cases you cannot even uh, upgrade from a centos to another or even lately you know with uh, the end of life for for centos and maybe having to switch to rocky linux or arma linux there are even more and more challenges in in this area so yeah, and along with that, you know, the patches and other updates. So this is this is like a snapshot uh, of the architecture um, and the challenges that came along with it. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, the bigger the project it is, the more suitable it is for for Kubernetes. And this is one of those cases. So. Um, now, after, I think from the moment it actually started per se, the, um, the migration to Kubernetes, it's been already a year, uh, to be more specific, I think even 14 months. And it's been a continuous project moving application by application by application by application. It's, it has not been an overnight process and definitely it's not started with uh, production. And definitely it's not started with, uh, you know, the critical applications. So it has been a really long and complex uh, path of uh, deployment that has been planned ahead. And now uh, in production, there are 78 environments. Um, and, 
you know, all these are on um, all these applications run right now on AKS. And uh, instead of having 100 VMs to manage, it's only about seven clusters to manage um, with the help of uh, of this deployment in AKS. This this brings a lot of ease of use and not only ease of use, but ease to manage. And a lot of time it's, it's won by both the development team as well as the DevOps team. And they can focus on actually uh, writing code. Uh, the devs can actually work on the features that are needed in the software applications and the DevOps team can focus on uh, further optimizing the Kubernetes uh, deployment. Right now, one of the key stages where a lot of improvements have been made in the past few months, it's observability. And I'll go deeper into that topic. Now, besides what has been done, um, it's it's always about the results. Definitely when, when we present such projects to, to our customers, we can only bring estimates, but in this case, because the transition has been finished for for all these applications, we can we can actually look at results. And if we look at one thousand uh, AVBs that are um, um, on on same day side, we're looking at about twenty three percent reduction in cost compared to. June 2022, and uh, these numbers are from last month. So um, this is this is what you know. It's really important to be able to compare with, to have a reference point in the past, and to see where actually the gain, financial gain, it's obtained from. Um, in terms of um, development infrastructure cost. Uh, we're speaking about a 40% uh, reduction in in this regard as well. Once it has been all moved to to Kubernetes, AKS in this case. Now, um, these two next ones are not about uh, cost reduction, uh, you no, know, in terms of, of of money per se, but uh, it's a matter of efficiency. Now it's four hours instead of 12 hours to spin up a new dev environment. As I said earlier, also with the Terraform and Helm uh, blueprints that have been put together by our DevOps and Dev teams. And one week instead of two weeks to deploy a new application with Dev, Demo and Production environments. And definitely we're not speaking about um, full hours that it takes to do that, but also syncing up with the dev teams and all the requirements that they have. Um, next, it's about improved scalability and performance. And we'll continue with the same example from, uh, from Sunday, where we have decreased the time to scale up um, from nine minutes to only one for a pod. And if we're speaking about a new node, it's four or five minutes. Um, yeah, so in the past, this was happening at uh, VM level. And right now we're speaking about the pods and the, the nodes from uh, AKS. And definitely way faster time for recovery. Um, yeah thanks to the way that uh, containers uh, and Kubernetes are working. From another project, which is uh, cars to click we have here uh, an, another example about uh, increased performance. Um, I placed it here because it was the best uh, benefit that I could link this with. And um, here it was not only about Kubernetes, but also a switch to microservices. So the application, which was initially a monolith, uh, has been uh, redesigned. And right now we're speaking about microservices. And yeah, for, for, for such an application architecture, AKS, it's even more suited um, because you can take even more advantages from, from it. And um, what happened here 
is that uh, the processing time for a big batch of, uh, of data, it went uh, down from two hours to 10 minutes once the application was, was moved uh, from the monolith and uh, VMs to the microservices architecture in Kubernetes. And actually this is not happening for the same volume of data, but for a 10 times higher the volume of data that it was before. So it's, uh, it's a huge improvement that Kubernetes helped with. Improved productivity, meaning that, you know, uh, the developers have more time to write code and not spend their time with infrastructure error or issues. So here, one way to look at things and um, one tool that we started to, to implement a while ago in order to monitor this, these metrics is Sloth. Uh, and we are able to, to track for some of the projects, um, you know, the Dora metrics, which speaks, up, speak about deployment frequency, lead time for changes, time to resolve, to restore service and, um, change failure rates. Now, um, in these um, tables, there are four kind of organizations and uh, definitely the ones to, to look at are the elite ones. Um, I highly recommend the yearly uh, state of DevOps from, from Google where they have uh, many insights in regards to, to Dora metrics. But what I want to highlight here is that uh, Kubernetes together with uh, the help of uh, the DevOps automations can help uh, teams to considerably reduce the time spent on manual provisioning. Um, even if it's a local environment, uh, when you have teams of uh, tens or hundreds of developers, uh, the impact, it's really, really big. Uh, especially when people come, people leave, and then new people come or, pe or the teams extend themselves, you can add up this time and it can be about hundreds or thousands of uh, hours per year that add up. So it's not only about production, but it's also about local environments and dev environments that need to be spun off for any new project. And in this case, you know, it was an example about uh, Spotify. Um, enhanced security, it's uh, the fifth uh, benefit in regards to, to Kubernetes. And um, here I will also share the story about uh, the PCI DSS example that I gave previously. Um, these are general things that, uh, you know, uh, Kubernetes can bring to the table in terms of uh, security benefits. And isolation is one of the top ones that have been used for the architecture that I'm gonna share next, but not only because there have been uh, a little bit of each of these ones. Um, they're all based access control, the secret management, network security, and in the end, you know, the last benefit, which is actually the sum of all the previous, is to, to help for compliance. Um, yeah, and as I said uh, at the beginning, for our customer, we managed to, to have um, an infrastructure and an application deployed on that infrastructure for uh, audit uh, ready in a record time by using Kubernetes. This is a snapshot uh, of that architecture. And what we can see here, it's um, the part uh, of the cluster that is um, isolated in the entire cluster. Yeah, so um, it's a multi VPC cloud infrastructure. And uh, by the way, this um, allowed to isolate within Kubernetes these key services. Um, it made things way, way, way easier and faster in terms of being PCI ready to be certified. Um, and each 
of these clusters is very very easy to to scale up or down and uh, still be able to keep the isolation and keep the compliance with uh, PCI. Here it was supposed to be six, uh, and the last one it's improved availability. Um, and before going into availability, two key elements here are observability and uh, Kubernetes uh, can help a lot to improve this area. The most implemented tools on this side are Prometheus and Grafana uh, that go along with Kubernetes and they help uh, monitor and log um, and trace you know, the error in the applications. Through the help of observability, uh, it's way faster for the dev and DevOps teams to actually trace the error. You know, not only see something at infrastructure level, but be able to trace it uh, till application level. And then a key component that comes along with uh, observability and it's uh, one of the advantages in Kubernetes, it's uh, the self-healing. Actually, self-healing as well as uh, predictive healing, um, which actually has a huge advantage uh, against uh, you know traditional VMs or even dedicated servers that probably needed to be replaced uh, completely. So, um, yeah, an example here is Pokemon Go. You know, who has successfully rich Kubernetes self healing capabilities. Um, but in a nutshell, it's uh, it's improving you know, um, the application resilience and uh, it's it's uh, increasing the availability. Um, yeah, in, in regards to what we've what we've had with uh, with same day, um, right now we have uh, way more metrics which are scrapped by Prometheus from all the deployment, all the services, nodes, and clusters. And then uh, to the use of Grafana, we're able to, to look at those in really meaningful reports. Of course, um, the stack, it's bigger than that. For example, we even had a deployment of uh, cube cost that helps us understand uh, you know, where we can continue to make optimizations in terms of uh, um, Kubernetes deployment uh, and how we can reduce those costs. For um, for the same example of, of same day, we had uh, looked at uh, Black Friday 2021 which was uh, before going on Kubernetes and Black Friday 2022, where we've been on, on Kubernetes. And the most amazing thing is that uh, even though um, we had a 20% increase in the total number of packages delivered um, and 80% spike in the numbers of orders delivered on Kubernetes in the first fourth day of the event, when is the spike in terms of, of Black Friday, there were no major issues on the company's application or infrastructure during the entire event. And on that side, uh, as mentioned, observability and the self-healing um, capabilities of Kubernetes helped a lot. Um, because um, it, it's not that it wasn't any issue, but any issue that was appearing, uh, our DevOps and Dev teams were able to to trace them way faster and to to be able to uh, kill or restart any container that fails, you know, and and this way um, to have the application always up and running or to have very small interruptions in terms of seconds or only minutes. Now the last slides I will I will skip them. I wanted to present a little bit also our uh, DevOps team, but I see that uh, I'm running out of time. I wa I don't want to go into into more details. We'll see if, depending on the questions, there will be any issues to talk further about you know our team and about the 
tech stack that we're using along with Kubernetes, because as said earlier, Kubernetes is part of, part of an ecosystem. It's not something that it stands by, uh, by its own. So thanks a lot for, for your time and for your attention. And uh, Vlad, I think I'm gonna pass uh, it over to you again. Thank you, Mihail, for your insightful presentation on how Kubernetes can solve real business needs. Your expertise in the area is impressive and I'm grateful for your willingness to share the knowledge with us today.